Hello everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton, and in today's lesson I'd like to talk to you about light as a wave. Our objectives are going to be to recognize that light is an electromagnetic wave and shares characteristics with the entire electromagnetic spectrum, and also to explain the concept of polarization and how it can be used in applications such as video displays and the high-end sunglasses. So let's start and take a look, but let's start by taking a look at electromagnetic waves. EM waves don't require a medium to travel through. Remember, mechanical waves, you have to have a medium. Air, steel, water, some sort of medium, some sort of matter for them to travel through. Electromagnetic waves, no medium required. They can go through a vacuum. Light is just a type of electromagnetic wave that our eyes can perceive. There are all sorts of other types of electromagnetic, electromagnetic waves. Now the speed of all electromagnetic waves in a vacuum is three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. That number is so important, we give it its own special letter, C. Little c, three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And to our understanding, nothing goes faster than that. The fastest anything can travel, three times 10 to the eighth meters per second, and that's an electromagnetic wave in a vacuum. Finally, electromagnetic waves are transverse due to the modulation of the electro, electrical and magnetic fields perpendicular to the wave velocity. So here we have a picture of a wave traveling there to the right. The electric field is modulating, is changing in this direction up and down. The magnetic field is changing into and out of the plane and the wave's velocity V is perpendicular to both of those modulations. That makes it a transverse wave. So, some characteristics of electromagnetic waves. First off, the product of a wave's frequency and wavelength must be constant in a vacuum. Remember V equals F lambda? Well, if V, the velocity of the wave in a vacuum, is constant, it's C, then C equals F lambda, F and lambda, their product must be constant, must always be C, three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Secondly, higher frequencies have shorter wavelengths. As frequency goes up, wavelength must go down, and sh lower frequencies must have longer wavelengths. Again, just that constant relationship, V equals F lambda. Finally, the relationship between frequency and wavelength for various types of electromagnetic waves is shown on this great diagram, this tool we have, called the electromagnetic spectrum. Here's what it looks like. We have a bunch of different types of electromagnetic waves, we have their wavelength up across the, top from across the top from longer wavelengths over here on the right to shorter wavelengths over here on the left. And it also shows us their frequency. We have higher frequencies on the left and we have lower frequencies on the right. And of course, that's an inverse relationship again because V equals F lambda. Now, it's also important to understand that the energy of an electromagnetic wave is related to its frequency. Therefore, higher frequency, shorter wavelength waves have more energy than lower frequency, longer wavelength waves. So the more energy per wave is over here on the left, which you'd kind of expect. A gamma ray in an X-ray has a lot more energy in it than something like a radio wave over here on the right end of the spectrum. So these are higher energy. Over here we have lower energy. And where does light fit into all of this? Well, if we take a look right here, here is light in the electromagnetic spectrum, visible light. And it's broken out so we can see it just a little bit better. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Where violet is the higher energy, shorter wavelength, higher frequency light compared to red, which has less energy. All right, let's see how we can use this. But first, let's talk about polarization. The direction of an electromagnetic wave, the electric field and the magnetic field modulation varies. Unpolarized electromagnetic waves, unpolarized types of light, exhibit modulation in all directions, where the electric field could be modulating up and down at different angles horizontally. Polarized light just means that we've cut out some of those directions so that most of the modulation is in a single direction. And it can be a little more complicated than that, but for a first pass effort, Let's pretend that we have just light where the electric field is modulating in a single direction. That would be polarized light. How do we get that? Well, we use what's known as a polarizer. Polarizers are materials which act like filters to only allow specific polarizations, specific orientations of, those light, of light to pass through it. 
you can think of it almost like a picket fence, a bunch of pickets, and as light comes through and hits that picket, only the ones that line up with the pickets can make it through. Everything else gets blocked. So the polarizer acts kind of like a picket fence to block anything that doesn't fit through those slits in the fence. Now they're typically sheets of material in which very long molecules are all aligned, and those are what act like the pickets when we get to such small, small dimensions. So how does it work? Things like sunglasses are often sold with the polarizing filter on there to reduce reflections. Well, when light reflects off non-metallic surfaces, it's partially polarized parallel to the surface it's reflecting off of. So if you could cut down some of the light waves, some of those rays that are polarized parallel to the ground, for example, you will get less reflections off the ground. So polarizing sunglasses typically have vertical polarizing filters to reduce reflections from things like the ground, those non-metallic surfaces. So light of all orientations going through the filter, only the ones that are vertically polarized make it to your eyes. And since most of the reflections are in that direction, you've cut down on a lot of the reflection. Great place to try this is if you ever go fishing or out on a lake, uh, skiing, snowboarding, uh, jet skiing, water skiing, you get the idea. Look at the water with and without polarized sunglasses and then try turning them. See what happens. Another place you see this is in liquid crystal displays, like LCD monitors. LCDs use liquid crystals in a suspension and they align themselves in a specific orientation when a voltage is applied. That allows you to allow the light through, through it at certain times when the voltage is applied and not when it isn't, or vice versa. Now as the liquid crystals align, they take on that specific polarizing orientation and they have the light coming, they have a light source, then in front of that light source they have a polarizing filter, and then they have an array of pixels where they have polarizing filters in a cross orientation they can turn on and off. If they turn them on so they're in a cross orientation, one polarizing filter this way, another one this way, no light gets through. If they want to allow light through, they allow the other filter to go in that direction and the light can make it through both sets of slits. And you can test this out. Take your pair of sunglasses that are polarized or a polarizing filter and hold it in front of the LCD screen and then try twisting it back and forth and you can see what happens as you change the orientation of the polarizing filter. Let's do a couple sample problems. The first with the uh, electromagnetic spectrum. What color of light has a wavelength of 5 times 10 to the minus 7 meters in air or 500 nanometers? Well, frequency determines the type of electromagnetic wave. So let's find the frequency. If V equals F lambda, then we know that frequency must equal V over lambda, or 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second over 5 times 10 to the minus 7 meters is going to give us a frequency of about 6 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Now let's head down to our electromagnetic spectrum and see where 6 times 10 to the 14 hertz lies. As I do that, I see that we have light right here, and 6 times 10 to the 14 is, looks like it's right about there, in the green, but close to the blue. So I would say that must be green light. All right, a second problem, analyzing an electromagnetic wave. A 1.5 times 10 to the minus 6 meter long segment of an electromagnetic wave with the frequency of 6 times 10 to the 14th hertz, ooh, that's that green light we just talked about, is represented below. Mark two points on the wave that are in phase with each other. Label them with the letter P. Well, all right, that means we want the same point on consecutive waves. If that's one, then maybe over there, that'd be another. Two points, same phase. And what type of electromagnetic wave does the segment in the diagram represent? Well, that's the same frequency as our last problem, so again, that must be green light. And while we're here, can you tell what the wavelength is of this light by looking at the diagram? Well, if this whole thing is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 6 meters, let's see, we've got one wave from there to there, we've got another wave from here to here, and another wave from here to here. So if we have three full waves in 1.5 times 10 to the minus 6 meters, I would say that our wavelength would be one-third of that, or 0.5 times 10 to the minus 6 meters, that distance. So we could find the wavelength right from the diagram, too. Of course, we could calculate it using V equals F lambda as well if we wanted to. Let's take a look at one more sample problem. 
A microwave and an X-ray are traveling in a vacuum. Compared to the wavelength and period of the microwave, the X-ray has a wavelength that is, well, let's use the electromagnetic spectrum chart and go ahead and pull one of those up. As you take a look, you know that it must have a wavelength that is shorter. The X-ray has a shorter wavelength that's on the left-hand side of that spectrum where you also have higher frequencies and a frequency that is higher. Well, if frequency is higher, well, period is 1 over frequency. So the period must be smaller. It's an inverse. So we've got shorter and shorter. Correct answer, D. All right, hopefully that gives you just a brief introduction to the electromagnetic spectrum. If you need more help or are looking for more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks, everyone. Make it a great day.